The Unlikely Innovators with Mike Comito and Steve Gravel. Presented by Cambrian R&D and the Center for Smart Mining. Well, Steve, worlds are colliding. Uh-huh. It was an episode in which we got to talk about tech, hockey, and football. It was Good. the. Un- I'm, glad, I'm glad we. I'm glad you allowed me to shoehorn <laughs> some some football in to this increasingly uh, hockey focused. Uh, oh yeah, it's this is pretty. <laughs> yeah, the, the unlikely hockey players is where we're yeah. eventually going with this. But yeah, this Not was bad. the unlikely innovators trifecta, combining our 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 passion for our respective sports, but also keeping the focus on tech and innovation. So obviously yeah. today, um, we were fortunate enough to be joined by Dallas West. Um, who has developed Blitz Sports, uh, which is a two-part solution that revolutionizes the user experience of operating a scoreboard. Uh, Blitzbox hardware facilitates a physical connection to a scoreboard while providing a Bluetooth connection for the Blitz Sports app to wirelessly connect and operate a scoreboard with an intuitive, stress-free interface. And I think what's really interesting about, about Dallas is that this is not really necessarily in his background. So maybe I'll kind of give you a little bit of overview on his background and we'll kind of chat about the, the conversation we just had. But Dallas West is an engineering leader with 20 years of experience in the petrochemical, biotech, and utilities industries. Based in Calgary, Dallas holds bachelor's degrees in chemical engineering and biotechnology from the University of Alberta. He's also a proud hockey ringette dad. Uh, And when not at work, you'll most likely find him at the local arena volunteering for his kid's team, operating the score clock, which, as you can probably tell, this is where the story goes, right? So uh, having suffered with the status quo for years, he's always had a vision for a mobile app that makes it easier to become a, a timekeeper. And so that's kind of where the story begins with him recognizing that during the at the outset of the pandemic that there had to be a better way to enter data into the scoreboard uh, clock. Again, if you are watching this on video, you'll see the example that he showed us of those clunky ones, you know, that are straight out of like Cold War era tech that seem <laughs> to be in, in arenas across Canada and I'm sure parts of the United States as well. So Dallas came on today to talk about his journey of of trying to you know find that innovative way to make scorekeeping easier and better, and then what the journey's been like to take that idea, turn it into a product, and now trying to turn that product into a business. And so, I think there's some cool things that he alluded to where you're starting to see the wheels you know going in real time as 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 he's looking to build out this product into into a business. Um, and I think he certainly has a lot of use cases not only in hockey and ringette on the ice, but in other sports that are using you know, public facing scoreboards. What did you think of, uh, of our chat with yeah, Dallas? I, well, I thought it was, I think it's a really interesting uh, technology. And I think that it's, uh, it's really cool that he's exploring a few different business models uh, based on what the audience is. So that's what I love about these biz- small business ones is that, uh, you know, the tech's cool and uh, you have to put as much innovation into the business model as you do the hardcore technology. So really excited to see uh, what Dallas is doing. I think it strikes a chord with both of us. But maybe what we'll do is we'll go to Dallas now and he'll tell us more about it. Right on. Okay. And we're back and we're joined by Dallas West, who is the inventor and owner of Blitz Sports. Dallas, thanks so much for coming on the podcast. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. Uh, When we sort of start these off, uh, Dallas, we sort of look at a bit of a retrospective. Uh, You have a bachelor's degree in chemical engineering and biotechnology. Did Did you ever think you'd start a tech company? And I'll, I guess I'll truncate that with, do you think you'd started in, in this field? Uh, I was, I've certainly always been passionate about technology, like ever since I was a little boy. And I think if you asked my parents, they might have said maybe, but myself personally, no, uh, I didn't. I, I've been doing my engineering career in my field for the past 20 some years. And uh, this is definitely a departure from that. Well, actually, you know, on that note, like, let's just dive in a little bit more with with Blitz Sports because um, this this came to me. You and I had chatted previously when one of our uh, mutual colleagues like brought this to my attention because I think he knew about, you know, the 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 guests that we profile on the podcast. And he knows about my love of hockey, um, and and certainly, you know, in in your experience as a you know as a proud ringette hockey dad and also doing you know, being the good dad volunteer as the scorekeeper. Um, what was it about, you know, the scorekeeping system that you were using at the time that really kind of led you to think there's got to be a better way? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, they say a picture paints a thousand words, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Here's the status quo. Uh, yeah. I'm sure this looks familiar to many hockey parents. Uh, 
That actually looks right better than the one that we have at my rink. I, I would take that one over the one I sent you a picture of. <laughs> yeah. Well, and what I saw, Mike, is uh, I had to be in the box for my kids' games, and I, I really struggled. And uh, just simple tasks like putting penalties up, taking them down, and then when you're struggling to do that, everyone's waiting for you, right? the ref, all the kids on the ice, and then parents who are trying to be helpful in the stands start yelling instructions, and it becomes this very stressful moment <laughs> for whoever's running the clock. And I I saw that play out for myself. I saw it play out for parents like almost on a regular basis uh, where games were being held up, people were being stressed. People didn't even want to volunteer for that role for the kids. And uh, it was right before the pandemic broke out. And I, I started thinking, I'm like, uh, there's got to be a better way here. Like, this is seemingly like 1950s, 60s technology. Everyone has a, a mobile phone. Why can't we control scoreboards with mobile phones? And uh, during the pandemic, when everything shut down, I, I found myself with a lot of free time on my hands. And that's when the development of Blitz Sports really kicked into high gear. Uh, I got to work. I started off prototyping some hardware. Uh, I, I, I started developing a corresponding app that could sync with that hardware and talk to a scoreboard. And then I kind of put it on the shelf for a few years. And then uh, last year, uh, I jumped in with both feet. I said, okay, we're going to do this. And I went out and I got a scoreboard. I put it in my basement, which was a big hit with my wife, as you might imagine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and I got it all working. And I started showing people, and it really resonated with parents. Uh, and, and then we got it out there in a few test arenas and time and time again, like the feedback has been overwhelmingly positive. And I think that's a good spot where I want to tap in one, one point of reflection. Uh, I, I can't imagine, I always get nervous if I have to change a tire in front of a bunch of people. I can't imagine, you know, you're, everyone's, you know, watching the game and you're screwing up the score. Well, that's you know, your worst nightmare, days. Steve. Yeah, I know. I know. That's, that's one of my worst uh, nightmares for sure. Um, but so you, the, the technology resonated with some people. Um, we often have people on who have, who've had really good technology ideas. And one of the things we like to ask them is, how did you know that that technology idea wasn't just a look at this cool thing that uh, Dallas West has when he brings to games? How did you know it was going to be a business? Because there's a big difference between a good tech idea and something you could turn into like an actual business. Uh, that's a great question. And to be perfectly honest, Steve, I'm still working to prove that out. Uh, we, we got into a few arenas. We hear really positive feedback from people using the app and uh, everyone engaged with the scoreboard. I've heard from team managers saying people are actually volunteering to uh, be the scorekeeper volunteer in those arenas that have blitz sports. We've had people reach out to us asking for lists of arenas where Blitz Sports is available so that they can volunteer. Where uh, we've heard less positive feedback has really been from arena owners. And uh, we've, we've done some reflection on that. And what we found is we're not really solving a problem for arena owners. We're solving a problem for parents or using the arenas. And so we've been working to take that feedback and consolidate it into a revised business model where we sell our, our blitz box. That's one of these that connects to the scoreboard uh, for a one-time price to arenas. Uh, we try to make it as economical as possible uh, so we can really uh, equip as many arenas and public venues as possible. And then uh, the base functionality uh, we're providing to parents for free. And then we're going to look to have premium features within the app for those 
parents who are passionate about using the app and wanting a better experience. And, um, you know, you mentioned like the, obviously the response has been, has been positive so far. It's been different, you know, response from the arena owners themselves. Um, can you share any stories from like parents who have also used it themselves, who have maybe been maybe a little bit apprehensive previously about having to take the reins as the scorekeeper and, and how much more, you know, maybe less nerve wracking it is, you know, having that tech with them so they can actually input things easily. Cause I know that in my experience, um, you know, at the rink that we play at every once in a while with our beer league guys, we'll have a game where we officially track the score. And there's a couple guys who've, you could tell that they've used the scoreboard before they know how to navigate it. Whereas like when I get up there and I've added too many goals, like my only option is just to keep like, punching in the number until it like goes over again. Right. But there is a way to reset the clock and the score. But anyway, all that to say, uh, how, how can you share any examples from parents saying like, you've made my absolutely. life so much easier. I, I, absolutely. Mike. Um, I, I've been in the box with people uh, like being the penalty guy, being the guy writing all of the uh, score data down on the game sheet. And I, I've seen people come in, take a deep breath, look at the scorekeeper box. And then I've told them, I was like, Hey, like in this arena, did you know that you can use your phone? And at first they're like, no, I didn't. Uh, And I'm like, well, let me help you get started. And very quickly within seconds, they're controlling the scoreboard from their phone. And like the lights go off. They're like, I just pressed the trash can to delete a penalty. This is the way it should be. And you can tell all that anxiety just instantly fades away. And I think it's important, too, that, I mean, most parents of of, uh, of kids playing hockey are technology natives now when it comes to uh, phone apps, right? So I think, you know, it's sort of the solution's born at the right time because if, you know, people my parents' generation and older would not have a great time adapting to that, but I think you're tapped into something, right? Absolutely. It, everyone has a mobile device on them at all times. And uh, people are getting out there, using it, really enjoying it. The The feedback that we've had on the app is, when are you bringing it to Android? And the good news is, that should be coming within the next couple of weeks. We're just Breaking in news. the midst of re- <laughs> recruiting volunteers for our Android testing program. So, so Breaking news on the unlikely innovators. <laughs> We always say, Dallas, when we have folks on, you know, like, can you tell us sort of what's next for uh, for your company? And a lot of times they can't, but I'm glad you were able to share that with us, if that's been a need that the customers have been asking for. Well, I, and we have a whole roadmap of exciting new features that we hope to have in place before the beginning of next year's hockey and ring at season. That's great. Nice. Let me ask, let me ask you. Well, actually, a sorry before before I think I know where you're going with sure, this one, yeah. Steve. But uh, the question I had, Dallas, maybe this is a little bit obvious, so maybe it doesn't need to be asked. But I'll put myself out there. Um, obviously, when you're using like those like archaic boxes that like we still have here in our rinks here in Sudbury, like that just basically inputs that data like in, into the scoreboard, and then the 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 timekeepers or the scorekeepers still have to fill out the game sheets. Does your app in the can you, once you input it there, does that then go into a database where I have like my game sheets kind of automatically spinning out? Like these are who took the penalties and things like that. Or is that, or is that part of maybe one of those, those features you're hoping to roll out? Uh, I, I think that's a great idea. And I, I, I love the way that you're thinking, Mike, right? Really what we're doing is we're digitizing the data. No longer is that data confined within the, the scorekeeper box. But once we digitize it and put it on a mobile phone, we are able to do very exciting things with it. And m- maybe I'll leave it there for now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but but we have a very exciting roadmap uh, ahead of us. I'm not. Uh, I'm. I would definitely uh, invest in some, uh, you know, children's sports fantasy leagues if that's what you're getting at, uh, Mike. <laughs> 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 no, but uh, so you said. Um, Dallas, you're gonna get ready for next hockey season. I grew up playing football uh, when I when I was young, and uh, one thing if we so there was it's a very volunteer laden sport as well for for little league football. You know, people are on the the scoreboard of course, and we always be like, who brought the scoreboard? You know, someone forgot the the box, right? Same kind of problem. Uh, but then there's also like downkeepers, and my dad would be like, 
Uh, you know, he never wanted to do it because he'd never focus on the game then, right? And he'd miss something. Uh, so sort of a two-parter. Um, how do you get volunteers to still focus while they're doing scorekeeping? And do you have plans for blitz sports to expand into other sports like soccer, basketball, football, anything that uses a public scoreboard? Maybe I'll take the, the first question first. How do you get people to focus on the game? And our approach at Blitz Sports is to make it easy for them. Right. And, and the example I point to there is uh, oftentimes in hockey arenas, Mike, you've probably seen this play out. The scoreboards have the ability to track shots on goal, but nobody knows how to do it. So nobody yeah. does it. With Blitz Sports, it's as easy as swiping left to increment a home shot on goal, swiping right for a guest shot on goal. So now the per person who's controlling the scoreboard can watch the game and really be into it and still control the scoreboard in real time. For your second question regarding other sports, absolutely. Uh, we've already expanded out to ringette, to basketball, to volleyball. Uh, there are a tremendous number of scoreboards in school venues all across the globe. Uh, those will be our, our primary focus as we get rolling in our growth trajectory here. But absolutely, we are looking to expand to other sports. That's awesome. Well, we look forward to seeing uh, seeing what's next for you in Blitz Sports. I think uh, – I think you've alluded to some very exciting things on the horizon. So at risk of, uh, of, of trying to get you to break further news on the podcast, I think we'll, <laughs> uh, we'll leave it at that. And maybe we'll have to do a follow-up episode once uh, some of those features For have sure. been shared publicly. But I think we appreciate you hopping on with us today. And uh, again, I also look forward to seeing maybe a, a Blitz uh, scoreboard box in, in my local rink. Uh, it would certainly make our lives a lot easier as well. Awesome. Well, thanks again for having me today, Mike, Steve, and look forward to coming back here in the future and telling you about our, our journey to uh, rid the, the scorekeeping world of anxiety for parent volunteers. Well, that sounds good to me. Yeah, thanks we can so get much, behind Dallas. that. Yeah, thanks, Dallas. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Mike, that was Dallas West from Blitz Sports, inventor of the Blitz Box, of course. Let me ask you something. This is me putting you on the spot because you usually ask me something at the end of these podcasts. Go for it. What do you think your favorite all-time sports buzzer beater is? If you could think of any sport, hockey comes to mind. Yeah. Um, honestly, like it's uh, maybe it's just because it's been like memed a lot, but like the Kawhi Leonard buzzer beater that's been then like oh, set to yeah. like the Avengers theme, like in that run that was against Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. Was it? Yeah. Yeah, like yeah. that's pretty cool. The four bounces or the five yeah, bounces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because obviously we know how that run ended that year. So obviously it ends with a championship. So like you look back on that and think like if that didn't happen, then like we don't probably have that 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 title for the Raptors. Yeah, um, or if Clay Clay Thompson doesn't get injured or Kevin <laughs> well, Hurt. Yeah, yeah, of course, of <laughs> course. But let's not worry about that. No, um, no, no. I mean, I, I think of that one just like as a as a recent like buzzer beater where even somebody like me who's obviously not like a huge basketball fan like that was a captivating moment i mean there's a lot in hockey that i think of none like for my own rooting team that i could think of that has made me happy um so yeah i'll yeah, go yeah. with that one for now yeah i think for me um i think uh i think of uh i started watching basketball with my dad early on which is weird because you know, he's more of a hockey fan but i remember um watching old uh, ESPN classics of uh, Michael Jordan shot over Craig Elo oh, yeah. uh, when they played the Cavaliers um, in uh, in one of the uh, divisional rounds. And I think he hits the jump shot and he does an even bigger jump with the fist bump. In the oh, air, yeah, yeah. I know exactly. Yeah, where yeah. it's like, okay, the jump on the jump shot was pretty wild, but that secondary jump was incredible. So yeah, that's, that's one of them for me. I feel like it's, it's uh, like there's, there's another one I think of in hockey regular season, like, there was the, the Kings were playing the Bruins and like uh, Tyler Toffoli scored with, I think it was like just over a second left. It was a clear, like they had to win the draw cleanly, mm. snapped it back to him. He fired in like, honestly, like they would never be able to do that again if they had a million tries. But in that moment it worked perfectly. And it was like literally no time left on the clock. But I just feel like that happens in hockey and like, you're never expected, but like, there's just yeah. something about like the basketball shot where like, 
you see that the score, the the clock is at zero and the ball is still in the air, right? And there's just yeah. something about the anticipation of that ball either going in cleanly or the bounce and it goes in. But like, yeah. you just can't get that in hockey because like, it's too fast and oftentimes like there's a scramble and like you really don't know what's happening until like somebody signals there's a goal. But like yeah. in basketball, there's just nothing like seeing that ball get released and just waiting to see what's going to happen. Once yeah, I think it's happen. only true of, uh, of of basketball that you have that, right? Because uh, it's like Schrodinger's cat, right? It's in the air. And at that moment, it's both a myth yeah. and a make. And well, then we're all waiting collectively. Yeah, and I guess in football too, like you know, not as frequently well, as in basketball, of, but like yeah. you get those moments where field like field goals for sure. Yeah, 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 buzzer beating field goals for sure. But uh, yeah, well, yeah, no, I think uh, it was a cool podcast. I think um, it has uh, an enjoy- like I, we've actually had you know people forget you know when I was playing you know football that they would forget the score box at home. Oh, you know, and then and then it'd be like none of the none of the fans <laughs> even knew what the score yeah. was. Or what let time me, it was. Or what time it was. That's key too. Yeah. Um, let me ask you this to close, just because Dallas brought it up. Like, um, who has a more understanding wife? Dallas West for uh his wife allowing him to have a scoreboard in the basement to test out this idea, or Kevin Costner's wife from Field of Dreams, who actually was <laughs> on board with him plowing the cornfield and making a baseball diamond. Uh, probably, uh, Costner's wife. Cause that's like money in the bank that yeah. uh, Corny plowed out. Oh, uh, I, and, and the reason I'm bringing this up is I'm rewatching it now. And well, you're a huge baseball fan it, now. I heard I, I am. I've got my glove in my office, huge. but like never in the history of the world, maybe has there been a more understanding partner than, cause like, I think of the harebrained schemes that I do at home and I'm yeah. sure you do. And our yeah. wives are definitely not on board, but I've never come up with something as like, I know that this thing makes us money, but like, what if I just plowed it because there might be ghost baseball players that want to come and use it? And yeah, she was it's, she was it's, firmly it's, on board with like, yeah, honey, like if that's what you need to do, do it. How did she not call the police? Like as soon as you said that, <laughs> or yeah, or like we need to call yeah. your doctor. You yeah, need to go to the hospital. First the doctor, then the police. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So Maybe anyway, a priest. <laughs> yeah. So apologies yeah. to Dallas for that tangent, but um, my house like, would be a freak show if it wasn't for my wife's <laughs> uh, filter. Honestly. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah, yeah, we need them. So yeah, we need them. Anyway, on happy that mo- note, Mother's Day. Um, maybe by the next <laughs> podcast, yeah, I'll, I'll have of uh, you know taken up all the sod in my backyard to create that baseball diamond, so I can have my own field of dreams. But until then, yeah, uh, this has been the unlikely us. innovators. <laughs> we'll see you next time. <laughs> bye. Okay, bye. The unlikely innovators with Mike Comito and Steve Gravel, presented by Cambrian R and D in the Center for Smart Mining.